My name's Alex. I'm training for Christian ministry. I'm also a transgender person and I do a lot of work with and for the trans community and with and for the church uh, around trans identities. There's lots of different ways to be transgender and that's just something that society is starting to accept and that the church is starting to grapple with a little bit. Um, for me, it means that I was born physically female um, and was identified as a female at birth. Um, but very quickly felt kind of alienated and isolated in that role. It just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like what God was calling me to be. It didn't feel like my internal sense of self. Um, and so ultimately that meant transitioning towards ma male for me. Now I present as completely male, but gender is starting to be recognized as slightly more fluid than that. And there's lots of trans people who, who transition to somewhere kind of in between as well. Basically, when I was a child, I felt like I was an alien, which is something that I often tell school children when I'm talking to them about these issues, and, and they laugh, and I want them to laugh. It, it, it's amusing. But actually, now that I'm an adult, I realize that, that a child feeling like an alien isn't really funny at all, because it, it's about alienation. It's about this sense that who we are isn't quite human, isn't good enough, isn't, isn't a real person. Um, so I was very, very isolated as a child. I didn't have any friends. Um, I didn't like my body, so I endeavoured to hide it as much as I possibly could, um, which also meant that I didn't like physical pursuits, so I, I didn't exercise, I didn't eat well, um, and yeah, my sense of self was just really low, and now, looking at it from an adult lens, I think my mental health was, was really suffering. When I was 13, I moved to a mixed gender school, and that was the start of me realising who I was, but it didn't help as much as you might think straight away because we still lived in a society where trans people weren't visible um, and you were very much either a boy or a girl. Moving to a mixed school and starting to realize that I felt like a boy was really deeply problematic for me because I couldn't say I felt like a boy. That would be the worst thing in the world to say. So I just had to keep it inside. And at first, the way that I dealt with that was by using other kind of social tropes to get by. Um, so I did cut my hair and I did start wearing more masculine clothes, but I was able to get away with claiming to be part of the LGBT community without actually saying that I felt like a boy. Um, when I moved to university, I was lucky enough to be invited to go along to an LGBT group. And for the first time, knowingly in my life, I met other trans people. And to have these conversations with these people who were just living authentic lives and being themselves was so powerful to me. And roughly at the same time, I started going to church again after quite a long gap. And I was actually able to have conversations with other Christians and, and, and with God about this. And it was, it was a process of discernment or a process of calling for me. I was constantly having to ask God, who are you calling me to be? Of course, a lot of people who are engaging with trans issues are young people, um, and that does create a barrier and it does create the feeling that we don't need to be talking about this in the church, that we don't need to do anything about it. But almost every single church that I've gone to, someone has been a relative of someone else who's transitioning. And I think for me, the questions are, how do we see these people as human? You know, how do you relate to your grandchild or your child or your cousin who suddenly says, I'm trans, what do you do? And that's what some of the work that I'm doing is trying to help so that we can stop focusing on bodies and sex and gender and actually just focus on what gifts people bring. One of the real contradictions and difficulties about being trans and training for ministry is that some people automatically assume that my liberal perspective means that I don't have a love for Jesus and I don't have a love for the Bible. And that's actually completely untrue and that's one of the reasons that I really have a problem with this term liberal because I'm obsessed with the Bible and I'm absolutely in love with Jesus. Today, where we're living in a society that is so individualistic and torn up, I think the real gift that Christ gives us is that grace that enables us to actually come together and be in community and relate. Uh, and I think that if we really opened up to that grace, we could actually be a force that could change the world.